while you're in class, you're going to be working on a project um, different from your pinch pot. So you're going to keep your pinch pot at home and work on it. First thing I want you to do is if you haven't finished smoothing, I want you to finish smoothing the outside of your pot. You want to get it as smooth as possible before you start to add the design because it's going to be harder to smooth if you wait until afterwards. If you're a senior and you are here for SAT um, on Wednesday, I included the video on what you missed on Wednesday. So you're going to start with that video, which will show you how to smooth your piece, how to fix any major cracks, how to make your rim nice and level. So all that will be in the video that's in the block. So click on that and do your smoothing and your finished work first. Now, when you're all ready to put, transfer your design from your drawing over to your pinch pot, um, first and foremost, I want you to be open to change. You might simplify your design. You may add more to it. Once you get started, um, you're going to be making changes as your piece communicates to you. So um, again, I talk a lot about artists listening to their work. If you're listening to your work and you're responding to what you're doing in front of you, you are being an artist. If you just blindly transfer your design, you're not giving your piece the full attention that it deserves. So make sure that as you're working on your piece that you make changes or alterations to make your piece and your design better. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the line that goes across the top here. And I'm going to use a pen tool to lightly sketch out my design. The great thing about a pen tool is that you can put a mark in the clay with a pen tool and you can use your finger as an eraser. So we just like using pencil on paper and I'm going to start out by giving myself a light, a very light straight line going around the pot. which at least will keep me, hopefully, it will keep me level when I do my swirly line. So once I do that, I can erase out that line. Now as I come around here to the other side, it can get a little bit tricky. I might have to do a little bit of planning. Um, and so I'm going to try to space out. And change my design where I started. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase out the lines that don't apply. And I can use my finger. If you're having trouble, you can use one of your wood modeling tools. Wood modeling tools come in all shapes and sizes. That's what this thing is called, is a wood modeling tool. And what's nice about a wood modeling tool is that it's a little bit more rigid than your finger is so that it actually smooths a little bit better than your finger especially as the leather hard clay starts to dry and gets more to the 10 percent range it's harder to smooth with your finger and I want you to notice I'm not using water because water is just going to make a slimy surface. And with this, if you have to do a lot of planning and drawing and redrawing of your design, this is one of the most important steps that you can do. 
Okay, so I'm happy with that, and I'm ready to go on. Now I'm going to add these little uh, vines hanging down. And I'm just going to randomly put them on here because I want it to look more like nature. And again, I'm listening to the, my artwork that's in front of me. So I have my plan. So now I'm going to go in and I'm just going to do the individual details. So again, you're listening to your work, you're letting it speak to you until you decide you like the way it looks. Remember, you're the artist. Okay. Now, then what I'm going to do is I've got these little extra lines. And I'm going to try them out on, let's say, this one. And I feel like that's a bit much. I'm going to just try one. So I think it's still going to look like a little seed pod, which I love seed pods. Yeah, I like that. So instead of doing two lines like I did on my drawing, I'm making a change. Now, this is a graded assignment, or I'm going to be grading your design. I don't want you to be afraid to change your design. You can simplify it, you can add more to it. I'm not going to be comparing your drawing here with the design, but I am going to be looking to see that you've, you've carried some of the ideas all the way to the end and that you've given it your best effort. Your grade isn't going to be dependent on the complexity of your design, because everyone has a different aesthetic or an idea of what's beautiful. But I am going to be looking at each of your times. Your lines begin and end deliberately. And what I mean by that is that you're going to start where you want to start and end where you want to end. Start here and here so that I can see that you are taking your time to make your lines nice and deliberate. Okay, I'm almost around to the other side. Okay, so when I'm done, I'm just going to take a look at my design. Yeah, I do. I like it. You should have a little yellow pencil in your toolbox, and you can sharpen it. Um, you can also use a, a regular pencil that you have at home. That's completely up to you. Um, these can be used to write with. So if I'm asking you to draw your design, I know you have a pencil in your box. So... Um, it's there for you, but I also like to use a pencil as a wood modeling tool. So just like these tools can move and shape the clay, so can a pencil. And you want to make sure that it's nice and sharp. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the time to go over my lines once, making them a little bit deeper. Don't press too hard. You just want to make them a little bit deeper. And you're going to go over all your lines with your pencil once. Now, I talk a lot about, about these little snotty pieces like that, these little snotty pieces that come out when you do this kind of work. 
don't worry about the snotty pieces. They will go away or they'll come out the next time that you work on your piece. So you don't have to worry about picking them out unless they're driving you nuts. And then you might want to pick them out. Okay, you can see that because I simplified my design, I can do a little bit better job of going nice and deep with these lines. Now, let's say you get to here like this. You get to this spot, and I really don't like that. I'm going to erase it back out and leave this one. At, and I'm going to actually shorten this up a little bit because I feel like this is getting super crowded right in here. So I'm going to shorten it up and add one. And again, I want you to notice that I'm not worried about those little snotty pieces. I call those floogies. Now, if you look up floogies in the dictionary, you'll notice that there's no such word. It's like a made-up Ms. Robbins word, floogies. Now, you don't need to sit here and watch me do this, but I do want you to go around your whole design with the pencil. You know, continue to smooth areas that you feel like could be a little bit smoother. And again, the best tool that you have in your toolbox here is your hands. Your hands can pretty much do almost everything. And tools are just an extension of your hand when your hand's not quite good enough. Like, I couldn't get my hand down in there, so I'm going to use my little yellow pencil to get down in there. But you're going to go all the way around. So you're going to do it first with a pen tool and second with a pencil. And then what I want you to do is I want you to take two pictures, one from the front, one from the back, and post them to slide number seven. And then you're going to wrap your piece up nice and tight in um, a plastic bag so that when you see this thing next Tuesday, you'll be able to put some finishing touches on it. If you have any questions, please make sure that you zoom in with me. I will be working with the other students that are in class so if you do zoom in, make sure you call out my name so that I know you're there, because I'll be walking around helping them. And um, otherwise, have fun.